Hello Camex, uh, this is Dan Preston from Illuminati Aerospace. Uh, I am honored to be asked to speak and I apologize I cannot be there in person. I want to thank you for this little opportunity to show you a little bit about ourselves, our company. I have a little bit of an unconventional background. Um, I was accelerated through school at a young age, so I was in college when I was 12. Um, I left college while I was still a teenager to start my first company which I, I later sold in my early 20s. Um, long story short, I, I retired and went a little bit crazy, not having 80-hour work weeks, and I started skydiving as a hobby. Uh, I wound up getting fairly seriously injured because of design defect, and I became very interested in this not happening to anyone else. Um, so I started a parachute company and started developing new state-of-the-art for parachutes. This company was named Atair Aerospace. Uh, this was sort of the first time I was exposed to both technical textiles and then to having a company with a deeper, a deeper meaning, you know, something that would make a social impact uh, on the world. So this was to protect people. I, I went on to develop satellite guided parachute systems that the US military and NATO countries use uh, for precision resupply. And this fundamentally changed uh, you know, how our country and others do airdrop. And we have hundreds of documented life saves um, you know, using the technology. We developed a working theory that the strength of a given composite was directly proportional to how many crisscrossing fiber nodes you had that were bonded together. But if you splay them out into toes, which is becoming more, more the standard now, you have a greater theory, you know, a theoretical number of those crisscrossing nodes, therefore a stronger component given the same weight and same materials. These are some of the initial composites that we developed using our thin ply technology. Uh, this is the lightest weight fabric that we produced at a total weight of eight grams per square meter. This is an 80 quad axial layer fabric uh, for ballistic applications. So if you take a look at the same fabric after it's been shot, it fully stops all the rounds. Uh, by changing the, the commingled uh, melt bond fiber, we can produce rigid panels that do the same thing. Uh, by adding a ceramic plate, we can make panels that stop armor piercing rounds. And here it didn't even want to go through the, the first layer of textile. Illuminati was formed uh, originally on the request of a very large dot-com. Um, and we were asked to undertake a project to enable connecting the remaining three, three and a half billion people in the world that don't have access to information services, uh, basically who, who aren't connected to telecommunications or the internet. I, I honestly can't think of another engineering project in the world today that would have a greater social impact. These people are not connected in the world because they live in low population density clusters centered within 20 degrees of the equator. So that makes it non-viable to connect them with copper wires, fiber optics, or satellites. So the most viable way to do this is with high altitude UAVs. It's as if you could put up low cost satellites and move them around at will. Um, so for, you know, um, for humanitarian efforts, for communications, for free access to the internet, it, it's what will make it all possible. My hope is that that will bring social change and, and improvement in the lives of uh, people in these various countries. The aircraft behind us is our model V0 Substrata. It is a solar electric and wind energy harvesting uh, powered aircraft. And it is uh, what we call an optionally piloted vehicle. So it can fly either fully, fully autonomous as a UAV or it can fly with a pilot on board. Uh, it's made from carbon fiber. The whole aircraft weighs 400 pounds, so it's an ultra lightweight composite aircraft. To keep an aircraft like that in the air, to overcome its drag penalty, requires four kilowatts of power. The wings right now have 14 kilowatts of solar cells on them. In order to achieve perpetual flight, we need to do anything that reduces the requirement for the battery power density of the batteries. Um, so by flying formations, we're able to reduce this. Most recently, we demonstrated and recorded an amazing 70% reduction in power to keep the formation aloft. 
internally, that's we're calling it the game changer of all game changers. So that flight and demonstration is what's laying the groundwork to make perpetual flight possible. I guess what's important about this aircraft is it's truly the state of the art in solar electric aircraft. And um, most surprising to us, because we built this as a research ship for our larger UAV, is how practical it's been as a piloted aircraft. Um, so it became the first solar electric aircraft to fly at Oshkosh, which is this country's biggest air show. I'm not sure if I have that magic crystal ball on what the key to success is, but I can say, you know, a, a solid foundation in, in, in reality. It has to be possible what you're doing. The math has to all prove out. You have to have the right team and you have to have the right partners. We decided Hexel would be the ideal partner and uh, happily they thought the same of us and uh, we've forged a strategic relationship and we're building these aircraft now. They are strategic in bringing any materials science developments that we achieve to, to a greater market. When I sold to Terra Aerospace, um, I had a very strict five-year non-compete afterwards, and I, I like to joke that about all I could do was become a farmer. Um, so in, in, in reality, I took over a couple farms from my family, and in, in an attempt to vertically integrate them, I created our distillery and a chocolate company. It was another way for us to affect a social change, and uh, we changed how, how farming is done in the country of the Dominican Republic and have benefited the lives of thousands of people. As to some of the other work mentioned, the wingsuits, um, we, we are above everything else aviation nuts. Uh, we love to fly, um, and so we have architected some of the, the stunts that people have seen uh, for Red Bull and, and other companies. Personally, I have more than 800 wingsuit flights, 200 jet-powered, um, and more than 3,000 test jumps, skydiving, and competing. For wingsuits, historically, uh, there, were, there were seven wingsuit inventors before me. All seven lost their lives testing their own products. So my partner and I developed the first safe wingsuits and brought them to market. We produced the first uh, 2,000 or so suits uh, that entered the market. They've been displayed at the Smithsonian, at the Cooper Hewitt Museum, at the Wexler, even at the Metropolitan Museum of Art as part of the Superheroes exhibition. And uh, w one of the most fun things from that was um, I'm standing next to Giorgio Armani, who did some of the superhero outfits for the show. And a reporter from the uh, Chicago Tribune came over and said, well, what's different about your, your, your getup? And I just kind of smiled and said, mine works. The definition of an invention is something that doesn't exist in the prior art, meaning is novel, and which isn't obvious to somebody normally skilled in the art. I think Edison got that one right in that ideas are easy to come up with. Um, even taking them 90% of the way is relatively easy. It's taking them to completion, that's the hard part that requires tenacity and you know, pushing boundaries. <laughs>